Thank you for joining us for our 15 minute silent meditation. Let us begin by taking a deep centering breath.
Good morning, and welcome to Creative Living Fellowship's online Sunday service. Please join me in our opening song, Use Me. Creative Living Fellowship. I'm the Reverend Dr. Sherry F. McCreary. I'm the senior minister here at Creative Living Fellowship, and it is my honor, my pleasure to welcome you here to our online service today. I know that you had a lot of options, and I'm happy that you chose to spend this Sunday morning with us. Creative Living Fellowship is a religious science church and teaching center, and we welcome all paths that lead to truth. We have a vision here of being a community of care, connection, and creation that opens hearts and incubates dreams. And we do that through the principles and practices of the science of mind. So again, I welcome you here. And at Creative Living Fellowship, we have a special welcome message that we give to people who are with us for the first time. So if you're with us in this service today, watching the service for the first time, I'd like to extend our welcome message to you. Whoever you are, wherever you've been, whatever brought you through our doors today, we welcome you here into our hearts. Namaste. Namaste is a Sanskrit word that means the God in me honors and welcomes the God in you. And that I do, and we do here. We have two practitioners who are holding high watch today. They are Jenny Sovereigns and Rhonda Emmerich. And what holding high watch means is that those two practitioners are sitting in meditation and prayerful contemplation, just holding a space for the perfect unfolding 
of this service and for the perfect unfolding of all that's going on in the world today, all that's going on in our individual lives. They just hold a space of knowing the truth, hold a space of, uh, of, of sensing into the presence of God for all of us. And so I thank Rhonda and I thank Jeannie for their service here today. We also have with us our music director, David Panessa. And of course, our song leader, Deb Covington, and our Jill of all trades. Deb is also becoming a part of the AV team now. And speaking of the AV team, who brings this service to us, uh, to you online, are Luis Morales and Nicole Jordan. Thank you both for your service. Yeah. Thank you both for your service here. So Nicole is going to bring us the video announcements. After the announcements, there will be a brief gong wash. And then following the gong wash, there'll be a few moments of silence. And then practitioner Susan Peacock will bring us our opening prayer after the reading. I invite you to allow the reading to become a part of, of your heart and a part of your mind and your thoughts this day. Just take them in and be with the words of the reading this day. Nicole, the announcements. Good morning, Creative Living Fellowship. Are you ready for your announcement? Remember that you can join us for Midday Meditation on Facebook at noon, Monday through Thursday. We look forward to seeing you there. Creative Living University Summer School is getting ready to begin. First up, we have Closer to the Divine, facilitated by practitioner Pete Waring. There comes a time when we realize the truth about spiritual practice. We must do the work. And it's worth it. Jonathan Ellerby's book, Return to the Sacred, follows the footprint of Ernest Holmes in seeing beyond the trappings of religious orthodoxy and revealing the common practices that bring people closer to God. Join Pete in a Zoom class and together study the practices in the book to inspire you to enhance and expand those practices that ultimately bring you closer to the divine. This Zoom class is offered Monday mornings from 10 a.m. to noon or Monday evenings from 6.30 to 8.30 p.m. starting June 8th and going through June 29th. And we have Transitions, facilitated by Rev. Sandra Hopper. We have all been experiencing transitions in the last several months. We are not doing life as we did when we started this year or even as we planned it. This Zoom class is an opportunity to be with the changes and for us to take a metaphysical look at a part of the life of Moses. He was the king of transitions. He went from floating in a basket on the Nile River to be a prince in Pharaoh's palace to an outcast because he committed murder. And that is not all. Join Reverend Sandra Hopper in this Zoom class as she teaches this new way of looking at Moses. Class starts Tuesday mornings, June 9th through June 30th, from 10 a.m. to noon. All summer school offerings are four-week classes for a fee of $79. You can find registration links in the comments of this video, in our uh, Facebook events page, on our website under classes, and under our CLU website, again, under upcoming classes. Get registered today. Stay connected and supported and join Reverend Sherry every Tuesday as she hosts a Community Care Connection Zoom meeting at 6.30 p.m. You can find the Zoom link information in the comments, our weekly email, on our website, and in our Facebook events. We look forward to seeing you on Tuesday. Remember, you can now make contributions to CLF via text to give Simply text the amount you'd like to donate to 602-610-1868. If it is your first time donating by text, you'll be sent a link to set up your account and to link your desired payment method. This payment method will then be linked to your phone going forward, so all you'll need to do is text the amount you'd like to give. And that's it for today's announcements. It is now time to move on to our gong wash with a brief moment of silence.
Our reading this morning is called Walking Up in the Tw Waking Up in the 21st Century from How to Find God in Everything by Amanda May Jeevan. The belief that we are small and powerless in the force of life is a lie that has kept us asleep for thousands of years. But God is knocking on the door now, urging us to wake up to the full glory of what our true nature. We can no longer wait for the politicians to stop bickering, for the environmentalists to think of a solution, or the world leaders to save us. We need to stop believing that someone else has the answer and actually become the change that we want to see. The future is in our hands. When we stop looking outside ourselves for something to make us feel better, safer, stronger, richer, or happier, and instead open the deeper knowing in our being that we realize our essential nature and change our reality. Each of us is the perfection of this very moment. The kingdom of heaven lies within. What we seek is what we are, and what we are lies in our hearts. The stark naked truth is that each and every one of us is a manifestation of God. This very realization has the power to change the world. When you see God in everyone, all separation dissolves. When you see beyond gender, race, class, wealth, job title, or any other label, all boundaries evaporate and you find yourself floating in the nameless silence of being that is your essential nature. We stand on the brink of a revolution in consciousness that has the power to transform our world. It is up to each of us to choose whether we are a part of this change. So I invite you to close your eyes. There is one life. That life is God's life. That life is the cool breeze on our faces this morning. That life is the rainbow, all of the colors of the beautiful faces on planet Earth. That life is the air we breathe. And that life is our waking up. I speak my word into the law. I speak my word for this service. I bless Reverend Sherry and know as the words of the divine flow, her, flow through her that all are welcome to take this inside and learn and be comforted. I know and accept blessings for everyone on this planet right now as we go through this transition. I bless all the people that have suffered with COVID and know that God is right where they are. I bless all of the protesters, knowing that God is with them as they walk. I bless the politicians and all the leaders of all the countries all over this world. I know that this is a season for change, and we are open and receptive to divine guidance. I know and accept that whatever needs to be healed is being healed right here, right now. And I bless absolutely everyone involved. I know and accept that we all are surrounded and enfolded in the infinite love of God. And God is with us always. So with deep appreciation and gratitude, I release these words into the law, knowing that it is already done. And I say thank you. Thank you, God. And so it is. Amen.
let us walk with each other. In perfect harmony. Let peace begin with me. Let this be the moment With every step I take, let this be my solemn vow to take each moment and live each moment in peace eternally. Let there That was Kit Holmes. She is a multi-instrumentalist. She's a vocalist, and she's an award-winning songwriter. And she's a dear friend from Austin, Texas. And I asked her to sing that song for us today, weeks ago. Weeks ago. It's, it just, it's just amazing to me how God works, but that's the song I had asked her to sing because I like her rendition of that song. And I'm so happy that Kit is here with us today to share this time with us. When I was in Santa Cruz, California, I used to do a Wednesday evening service. And whenever Kit would travel to California, Northern California, she would stop through and sing at my Wednesday evening service. So, and that's how we met, really. She, she sent me an email about singing at the Wednesday evening service, and she did that. And so we have a special relationship, and I'm really glad that she's with us here at CLF this morning. So let's all just take a breath together. Welcome to June. I heard someone say on TV the other day, welcome to Blur's Day. <laughs> it feels like that, doesn't it? Every day is Blur's Day. And so here we are in June already. And so I welcome you to June. And, and as you know, our, our theme for the year continues. Life is, life is for living, just say yes. Life is for living, just say yes. And our theme for the month of June is the gift of change. The gift of change. Let's take a breath on that. Because we don't always see change as a gift, and yet we know that it is. The gift of change. And as I, was, as I prepared for, uh, was preparing the themes for the, for the months and the, and the topics, I wasn't quite sure what they meant at the time when I wrote them down, and the topic for today is crossing the bridge, crossing the bridge. And when I wrote it, it was like, hmm, wonder what that means. And as I looked at it uh, last week, crossing the bridge, I wondered, what, what, what does that mean? And as, as things progressed through the week, you know, so many things are going on now, so many things are happening so fast, so much is going on around us, and there's so much 
Well, last week was, there was so much anger. This week there wasn't all that anger, and there seems to have been a shift, but there's still a lot going on, it's a lot of emotion, a lot of, a lot of feelings, a lot of grief, a lot of sadness, a lot of all that. And I was just sort of observing all that as I was going through the weeks. And I was very busy this past week, and I still didn't know quite what crossing the bridge meant, but I thought I'd, I'd get to that uh, eventually. And I was, was in a meeting on, on Thursday when the funeral for George Floyd was held. So I didn't get a chance to watch it, but I had the TV on in the other room. And I happened to get up and go into, and I happened to get up and go into the living room when the TV was on, just as Reverend Al Sharpton asked people to stand for the eight minutes and 46 seconds. And I stood. And I realized I had not watched, I've not seen the video of the murder of, of George Floyd. I could not watch that. That was too painful. So I've not, as many times as they've shown it on TV, I've, n I've never seen it because I've always looked away. And so in looking away and not feeling that pain, I also was avoiding feeling a lot of anything about it. I, I was just really more in my head than I even thought that I was. But at any rate, when I walked into that room and I stood there with my head bowed for eight minutes and, and 46 seconds, I could feel myself just cracking open. I could feel my heart cracking open. I could feel the feelings coming up. I could feel what eight minutes and 46 seconds really felt like. I was still, I was in that moment for eight minutes and 46 seconds. And the emotion started to come, and the tears started to well up, and the feelings started to come, and flashbacks started to happen, and memories started to flood in. And all of a sudden, I felt overwhelmed by it all. Yet I felt open to it all. I felt one with it all. I felt one at one with everything that was going on. And I became so aware of how I had blocked so much of the pain. I had blocked so much of my feelings regarding things that have happened in the past, things that I know about, things that I've experienced, but all of that just, just came to the forefront as I stood for those eight minutes and 46 seconds. And I realized that a bridge is, a, is something that connects two points. It connects, it, it's usually we think of it as a structure that leads a path across water or across some kind of obstacle. But it really is a connector. It is a connector. It connects one point with another point. That eight minutes and 46 seconds was a connector, was a bridge for me. It was a bridge from, 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 from holding everything in to, the, to, to, to the, the, the awareness and the reality of what's happening in the world today, what's happening all around me, what I'm feeling, what I'm experiencing, what we all are feeling, what we all are experiencing. And so I, I really began to realize what a bridge really is and what this talk really is about. And I'm giving you some history so that you understand the importance and the, 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 the significance of crossing the bridge and, and the significance that I didn't even know until after that, that, that bridge moment that I had with those eight minutes and 46 seconds. Because the rest of the week, every time I looked at the, at the topic, crossing the bridge, what was on my mind was the Edmund Pettus Bridge in Selma, Alabama. The Edmund Pettus Bridge in Selma, Alabama. I was born in Selma, Alabama. I didn't grow up there, but I was born there. My grandparents lived there. My mother was born there. My mother was raised there. But the Edmund Pettus Bridge in Selma, Alabama, that's the way you get out of Selma to Montgomery. And when I started to think about the Edmund Pettus Bridge, I started to think about that march from Selma to Montgomery. And I started to think about March 7th, 1965, Bloody Sunday, when Congressman John Lewis and Hosea Williams led the march from Selma to Montgomery. And when they got to the bridge, to the Edmund Pettus Bridge, they were turned back by violence from the state troopers, from the local police. They were beaten, they were, they were injured. Uh, John Lewis's skull was fractured. My mother's sister was on that bridge. She was in that march. She was, she was in that march. She was on that bridge that Sunday. She was one of those protesters who was beat back. And they retreated, and they went to Brown Chapel Church, which was my grandmother's church, where my mother grew up in that church. 
and they went back to Brown Chapel Church and they tried to get themselves together and decided that they would try again in a few days. And when they tried it again in a few days, by that time the governor had gotten a, a federal court order to prevent them from marching. So they had to turn back a second time. And finally, a few days later, Martin Luther King had come into Selma to march with them and the, the court order had been rescinded and they were able to make that march across Edmund Pettus Bridge and then the 54 mile march to Montgomery, Alabama. Let's take a breath together. The point that I'm making is that there are so many bridges. There's so many bridges that connect us. As I said, the, the, the eight minutes and 46 seconds was the bridge that connected me to the past, that connected me to who I am, that connected me to my feelings, that connected me to this talk, that connected me to this topic of crossing the bridge. You know, in order to have change, we have to be able to, we have to be willing to and be able to cross the bridge to get to change. Staying in Selma, everything was gonna stay the same. People could not vote. Uh, 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 black people could not vote in Selma, in many places in Alabama, but particularly in Selma, and they were trying to register to vote and they couldn't, so they were gonna have this march to Montgomery to bring attention to the Voters right, Voting Rights Act. I'm not talking very well, to the Voting <laughs> Rights Act. And that, that still had not been passed, but that the legislation that was there in, in, in Congress. But they had to get across that bridge first. They had to be willing to cross that bridge first. And, and despite the pain, despite the danger, despite the risk, they had to be willing to cross that, change, that bridge because that's where change is when we cross that bridge. When we're willing to cross the bridge from where we are to where we want to be. When we're willing to cross the bridge from, from what's, what's been happening all along to, to what we'd like to see happen. And so they were willing to risk their lives to cross that bridge to get to Montgomery, Alabama. And after they did, then the Voting Rights Act of 1965 passed. And so when I look at that, when I think about that, I just look at what's happening today. What's happening today is not dissimilar to what was happening then. There were a lot of people who came to march. There were a lot of people who, who, who marched the, the entire trip. There was a lot of danger. There were some people who were killed on that trip to Montgomery. There, 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 there were more people who met them in Montgomery. I think they ended up with about 8,000 people who were there, or, or maybe more, who were there in Montgomery by the time they got there to, to do the march, to end the march there in Montgomery. But the whole thing resulted, crossing that bridge resulted in the change of voting rights in Alabama. My grandmother cast her first vote after she was 70 years old. And that, those people crossed that bridge so that she could do that. They crossed that bridge so that change could happen. And, and what I want us to understand is that not only did they cross that bridge, they were the bridge. You know, we have to be willing to cross a bridge, but we have to be a bridge before we can cross it sometimes. We have to be a bridge because the bridge is in consciousness. The bridge is in consciousness, in our consciousness, our willingness to be that bridge between, between hate and, 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 and love, to be that, to be that bridge between, between fear and love, to be that bridge between doubt and faith, to be faith, to be that bridge. We have to be willing. We have to be willing to be the bridge. And when we can be the bridge, you know, as within, so without. When we, when, we, when we can be willing to be the bridge, then we can cross the bridge and we can bring others with us. We can bring others with us. So let's take a breath together. The gift of change. Crossing the bridge changes everything because it changes us and it changes our location. It changes where we are to where we want to be, to where we want to be. You know what has been a bridge for us also this time, during this time? COVID-19. COVID-19 has been a bridge. Who would have ever thought that a pandemic would be a bridge that we had to cross, or that would be a bridge that would allow us to get from one place to the other? Because you know, COVID-19 brought this whole globe together. It brought us all together. It made us all stay home. 
It made us all stop being busy. It made us all stop running into our own individual lives and doing all kinds of things that can distract us. And it made us all be still for a moment. And you know, being still for that moment, being home for that moment, there were so many people who got to see the murder of George Floyd. Do you know that, doesn't, that wasn't an unusual thing that happened? The unusual thing is that so many people got to see it. So many people all over the globe got to see it because everything had come to a stop. Everything had come to a halt. Everything had required us to be still. And once we were still, once we were, once we were, were not jumping from one place to the other, flitting from one place to the other, then we came to a place of stillness and our, our awareness was heightened. So we were in a period of heightened awareness. COVID brought us to that period of heightened awareness so that everybody, many, many, many people, as I said, all over the globe got a chance to see exactly what happened. Got a chance to see what I know happens all the time. Got a chance to see what many of us know happens all the time. That was not unusual. The way that it happened on camera was unusual. But the unusual thing, the unusual thing was the fact that, as I said, so many people got a chance to see it. So many people got a chance to observe it. So many people got a chance to wake up and say, oh my God, how could this be? And so there's so many who are awake today. There are so many now who are out marching, who are out protesting, who are out saying enough is enough. There are so many now who are willing to be that bridge, who are willing to be that bridge and then cross that bridge. Cross that bridge. That's on both sides. That's on the side of the protesters and the side of the police force. We see, we see more and more that people have started to move from anger and separation more and more to oneness and togetherness and love and, 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 and community and recognizing humanity. Yes, there have been some, some incidents of violence still this week, but nothing like last week, nothing like the looting and the burning and, 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 and the anger that was, that was showing up last week. There's been a shift, if you notice. There's been a shift. There's been a shift all around. And people are beginning to respond differently. People are beginning to see things differently. It's like a veil has been removed from the eyes of the world. And all of a sudden, we're beginning to see rightly. We're beginning to see what's happening. We're beginning to see what's been happening for the last 401 years. In this country, we're beginning to see so much that we could not have seen before, but it's all because we've been willing to cross that bridge. And as I said, many people who are out there marching are, are, are willing to be the bridge because there are so many who have been, uh, have said, I've, I've, I've heard so many people say that they're willing to risk illness from COVID-19 to do what they're doing right now, to be out there in the, those crowds, to be out there marching, to be out there protesting, to be out there yelling, to do all those things that we're not supposed to do during this time. They're willing to take that risk. It's just that important to them at this time. It's just that important to all of us. It has to become important to all of us. When we talk about oneness, when we talk about about all of us being made in the image and likeness and out of God itself, when we talk about there being only one life, only one power, only one presence, only one mind, only one breath, and that is God, that is the life of each and every one of us, then, then there has got to be a time when we start to live that. And I asked the question last week, what is it gonna come to, what is it gonna take for us to come to realize that there's only one? What is it going to take for us to come to live in oneness and know that we have to live in oneness? Oh, we die in separation. All of us. What happens to one of us happens to all of us, believe it or not. It happens to all of us. And so the question I did not expect to be answered as quickly as it was. It, I didn't expect it to be answered so soon, but the answer is coming. And we, ha and, 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 and we have to continue to wake up to it. We have to continue in our awareness. We can't let this be a one-shot deal. We can't let this be, we, I've seen these marches before. I've seen all this stuff that we're doing now. I've, I've heard the, the chants, I've heard the songs, and we've done all this before. What's it gonna take for us to change and let this change be lasting and let us continue to move forward? Because you know there are forces that are con continually trying to pull us back. There are forces that are fighting for the status quo. 
There are forces that are fighting for the status quo, and we have to be willing to continue to be the truth that we know. We have to continue to be the truth of oneness. We have to continue to show up in our own lives in the truth that we know and as the truth that we know, that we are all a part of the one. We are each and we are all a part of the one. Yes, we are all different. No, we are not all the same. Yes, we are all one. No, we're not all the same. Thank God for that. But what we have to do is come together in our difference, come together in our diversity, come together in our, our different colors, our different races, our different ages, our different genders. We have to come together as one. But we have to, that, that's what being a bridge is all about. It's when we recognize that we are the bridge between separation and oneness. We are the bridge between separation and oneness. And when we recognize that, then we start to, 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 to cross the bridges that are required of us to cross in order to live in oneness. But we have to be it in consciousness first. And so there are a couple of things I'm going to invite you to do today. Let's take a breath first of all. A couple of things I'm going to invite you to do today is stay awake. Stay awake. You know, it's like a global alarm clock went off. A global alarm clock went off when George, George Floyd was murdered. A global alarm, everybody woke up. Don't hit the snooze button. Don't hit the snooze button next week, next month. Things are opening up now. The, the, the more and more people are able to go out. People are going back to work. Sports events are going to start happening. The bars are opening. The restaurants are opening. Uh, schools are going to be open eventually. So many things are beginning to happen now that we can get distracted. Don't get distracted. Don't get distracted. Stay awake. Stay awake. That alarm clock that woke us up was pretty, pretty heavy, pretty heavy duty. COVID started waking us up. That alarm clock was pretty heavy duty. We don't want one heavier or louder than this one that we have right here and right now because we still have the opportunity to make some changes. We still have the opportunity to walk in oneness. We still have, to have the opportunity to practice what we know. We still have the opportunity to come together in oneness and in the knowing that God is all there is. And the knowing that God is all there is. So I'm inviting you to stay awake, to stay awake, to stay awake. And then be the bridge. Set your intention to be a bridge. Be a bridge from separation to oneness. Be a bridge from, from hate to love. Be a bridge from ignorance to, 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 to enlightenment. Be a bridge. Be a bridge. And, and, and what that means for you is it, not going to be the same thing it means for me. Be a bridge. Be willing to have conversations. Be willing to speak up, to speak out when you see injustice. Be willing to see what it is you can do, how it is you can be different. That's, that's on each one of us. It has to start, as the song says, it has to start with each one of us individually. So be willing to be that bridge. Marianne Williamson says that a crisis, a crisis will, will make us go deep to discover who it is we are. It forces us to go deep to discover who it is we really are and what it is we really believe and what we really love. We are a country, a world in crisis right now. There's a crisis all around us. It's forcing us to go deep. It's forcing us to look at what we believe. It's forcing us to look at what we have believed in the past and, 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 and how, much, how many of those beliefs we still hold on to. It's forcing us to change. It's forcing us to change. It's forcing us to change. And if you're one of those who is ready to dig your heels in and stay the same way that things have already, always been, bless you. Bless you. God bless you. It's time to move forward. It's time to, to, to continue with this change. It's time to cross that bridge. So being a bridge, as I said, means to make whatever changes there need to be made in your own individual lives. Engage in those difficult conversations. You know, one of the most difficult conversations in this country to have is about race. That's the, that's the number one conversation, that national conversation that we need to have. But the conversation has to start with us. 
with our, within ourselves and then with our families and then with our friends and then in our small communities. And we need to really have honest, uncomfortable conversations. And we have to come to the realization that we, we are not all the same, that my experience is of this world is different than your experience of this world. Your experience of this world is different from the next person's experience of this world. That we all have our differences and recognize the differences. Recognize that the way that I move through the world is not the way you move through the world. We have to come to recognize all of that. But we can only do that when we are in consciousness ready to be a bridge. Ready to be a bridge between that separation and that oneness. Ready to be a bridge, as I said, between ignorance and enlightenment. Ready to be a bridge. Ready to learn. Ready to give up our old ideas about who we are and who the other person is and how the other person is and all that other stuff and be willing to listen. Be willing to not only talk, not only speak up, but be willing to sit back and listen without being defensive, without being offended, without all that. And to recognize that when we have the, the, when we have the right intention, when God is in the midst of it, when we recognize that we are doing this for the purpose of, of, of living in oneness, living in, in, in oneness with our creator, living, living in oneness with each other, when we recognize that this is our reason for being, to express that power and that presence and that love and that light that is God. And each of us is doing it in our own unique way. And when we recognize this, then we recognize that everybody's doing the same thing. Everybody's expressing God. And when, and, 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 and when they don't even know it, when they, they don't even know who they are, then it's for us to hold the space for them to get there. It's for us to hold the space for us all to get there so that we can all get to the same place, crossing that bridge. And when we're holding a space, we're being that bridge. That's what those two practitioners we're holding high watch are doing today. They're holding, they're, 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 they're being that bridge for us to walk through this service, for us to walk through this time. When we pray, we're being that bridge. And you know, a bridge, I, when, as I mentioned prayer, I'm thinking, you know, bridges have to be strengthened. They have to have support. They have to be anchored. So that when the weight gets on them, they don't, they don't cave in. They don't fall. If, when we are the bridge, our anchor is God. Our anchor is our spiritual practice. Our anchor is, is our awareness of the truth, that, that there's only one life, that there's only one presence, that there's only one mind, that there's only one, 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 and that we are made in the image and likeness and out of that one, and we live and move and have our being in that one. That's what being a bridge is about. That's what being a bridge is about. And that's what I'm inviting you to do, to be, stay awake and be a bridge. And then once you are in that consciousness of being the bridge, then be willing to cross the bridge to change. Be willing to cross the bridge. And you know, when, 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 when we are in that place of being the bridge, we are, we are able to be the bridge because of the vision we have because of the vision we have of what the future looks like, when we, because of the vision we have of, 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 of what oneness looks like, of what living in oneness is like. And you know, I was talking last week about pain pushing until vision pulls. If we allow our vision to pull us, well, if our purpose is to have change in this country, to have change in this world, to have change so that we are all treated equally, to have change so that we are all, the humanity of everyone is recognized, not just a few, but of all of us. The humanity is recognized, is honored, is, is respected. When, when, when we're in that place uh, of, of knowing that, 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 that that's the purpose for, being, for, for crossing the bridge, that's the purpose for being the bridge, the purpose for crossing the bridge is to, 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 for the recognition, for the recognition, for the recognition that we are all one, for the recognition that we all deserve equality, that we all deserve humanity, that we all deserve it all. Simply by our birthright, we deserve it all. We don't have to earn it. We don't have to earn it. But when we're in that place of, of, of purpose, our purpose is, is, our purpose is informed by our vision. When we have this vision of oneness and our purpose, our purpose of making this change is informed by that vision. And so then our purpose pulls us. Pain pushes, 
purpose pulls. Our purpose pulls us. And that's what's happening now. The people who are protesting now, they have a purpose. And that purpose is what is pulling. But that purpose is because of that vision. That vision that's been held for so many years. That vision that's been held for centuries. For centuries there's been the vision of oneness. There's been the vision of justice. There's been the vision of equality. There's been the vision of God being seen everywhere in everyone. And they may not have termed it that way, but that's exactly what they meant. God being seen everywhere in everyone. That's the, that, that's, that's, that's the vision, and that has been the vision. And so now the vision has informed the purpose, and the purpose is to make the change to that. And that's what's pulling now. Purpose is pulling. Despite COVID, despite all the other stuff that's going on, despite the risks, despite everything that's going on, Purpose is pulling. Purpose is pulling. The purpose to live at one in God. At one in God. At one in God. And it all starts in consciousness. It all starts with our consciousness. That, 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 that strengthening of the bridge that I was talking about has to be our spiritual practice. It has to be our anchoring in practicing the presence of God, our anchoring in the truth that we know. It has to be standing resolute in the truth that we know, resolute in the knowledge and the awareness that God is all there is, that God is all there is. That there's but one life, there's but one power, there's but one presence. There's but one life, that life is God's life, that life is perfect, that life is my life now. There's but one life. There's only one life. That life is God's life. That life is perfect. That life is my life now. There's only one life. That life is God's life. That life is perfect. That life is my life now. And that's what we have to say and know over and over and over again to ourselves and, and when we're looking at others and when we're dealing with others and when we see things ratchet up over these next few weeks coming up. You know, we have not reached the promised land yet. <laughs> we're not there yet. We are just about to cross the bridge to start on that trek to the promised land. We've been talking about it for a long time. But do you know, I, I just have to mention this, that that, that, that march in, in, from Selma to Montgomery happened in 1965, and the Voting Rights Act resulted from that. Do you know that voting rights are now being, being rolled back? Voting rights are now being rolled back. Voter suppression is now happening more than it happened in many, many years. That's because people went back to sleep. They thought we'd already accomplished this. They thought we'd already done that. They thought black people could already vote. So now we can go on about our business. No, that's not the way that works. That's not the way that works at all. The way it works is we have to stay awake, we have to stay aware, and we have to stand in the truth that we know each and every moment of each and every day. And be, aware, be, 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 be willing to allow each and every person the right to do the same, to stand in the truth, to stand in who they are, and to honor and respect each other. That's what we have to do. That's what we have to. That's how we have to be. That's the bridge we have to be. We have to be committed to that. We have to be a hundred percent committed to that. Have you ever noticed how committed to hate people who hate are? They work day and night at practicing hate. Do you know that we who love don't seem to work as hard? We don't seem, we just think it happens automatically because we feel it. We don't seem to, to, to be as committed to it. We seem to, to, sometimes we'll turn a blind eye to things. Sometimes we, we will turn a deaf ear to things that are going on around us. Sometimes we'll act like think we don't know what's happening. We'll, we'll feign ignorance because it's not happening to me. And so I'm saying to you, be as committed to love. Be 100% committed to love. Be 100% committed to healing. This is where healing happens. Be 100% committed to healing. Be 100% committed to, to up-leveling our consciousness. Because the, the collective consciousness has already shifted, as I said before. The collective consciousness has already shifted. We begin, we don't see as many stories about, of them right now, but we begin to see little things that are happening 
little changes. You see the police officers kneeling with the protesters. You see police officers dancing with the protesters. I saw that last night. They were doing the electric slide in Atlanta. So, <laughs> uh, this morning I saw a story of, of a woman in Palm Beach, Florida, who was, she's 80 years old. She was the only one who was out protesting. And a policeman stopped her and incited her for not staying hydrated enough, and he gave her a bottle of water. Is that wonderful? It's little stories like that. It's little things like that. That's where change happens. She was willing to be that bridge. She was out there by herself, but she was willing to be that bridge. And that policeman was there, and he was willing to be that bridge also. That's how change happens. It happens in, in, in little pockets. It begins with me. It begins with each one of us. That's how peace happens. It begins with each one of us. That's how love happens. It begins with each one of us. Love is already here. Peace is already here. Harmony is already here. All we have to do is open up and allow it to be revealed in and through and as our very lives. Let's take a breath. Let's cross that bridge. And we can cross that bridge because we can be that bridge. And as we cross that bridge, we receive the gift that change is for all of us. For all of us. Because it's not a gift unless it's a gift for all of us. For all of us. So let's just turn within in this moment. Just turn within in this moment. Taking a deep breath and recognizing one power, one presence, one mind, one life, one peace, one love, one joy, one being, one activity, one bridge. That's God. God. Divine intelligence, source by whatever name, it is source. It is that within which I live and move and have my being as it lives and moves and has its being in me. It is my very life, it is the life of each of us. It is that which inspires us, which animates us, which, which breathes us. There's no separation, there can be no separation. God, my life, my life and the life of each of us, God. One. And so it is from this place of oneness that I speak the word for us this day. I speak a word of healing. I speak a word of healing in our consciousness, healing of the collective consciousness. Healing in our, our, of our sense of separation from, from God, first of all, and from each other. Healing. Healing is happening everywhere. I speak a special word of healing for anyone who needs healing in their body temples today. Knowing that every organ, cell, tissue, function, system of their bodies is responding to that radiant healing presence of God. I speak a word for anyone who's lost a loved one this day. Just knowing that God is in the midst of that broken heart. God is in the midst of the grief. God is in the midst of loss. I speak a word of blessing for anyone and for healing for anyone who's lost a job or who's experiencing lack or financial lack of any kind. I know that abundance is their birthright. Prosperity is their birthright. God is in the midst. And all needs are being met in each and every moment. For God is the thing itself. And, and God shows up in and through our lives as whatever it is we need in any given moment. I speak a word of blessing. For anyone, I speak a word of healing and a word of blessing for anyone needing healing this day in any area, knowing that God is right where they are right now. Blessing, keeping, loving, lifting, comforting, guiding, directing, balancing, caring.
God is. Healing is happening everywhere, even when it doesn't look like healing is happening everywhere. And I just simply say, thank you, God. I pause momentarily so that you may speak the names of anyone you'd like held in prayer. You may speak their names silently or loud, and you may speak them now. And so for all those whose names are spoken here this day, I know that God is in the midst of everything, everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. And so I just give great, great thanks. As the prayer goes out to protesters and the politicians and the police force, governments, citizens, everyone, God is in the midst of every situation and circumstance. And I simply say, thank you, God. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And I just allow it to be. And so it is. us to our offering time, the self-conscious giving time, our time of giving and receiving of our tithes and offerings. CLF is a tithing church, as you know, and we invite you to join in the sacred practice with us by pressing the donate button and tithing here at CLF, or you can use our new feature of text to tithe. The number should be on the comment section of the Facebook page. It's passing along now. And once again, I'd like to thank you for your continued financial support of CLF, even though our doors are not open to you right now. Our hearts are, and your hearts have been open to us, and we thank you very, very much for that. Uh, one way that you can continuously give, as you know, is the auto tithe option, so I invite you to select that option also. And while we are engaging in our offering, Kit Holmes will bring us another song now. All right, this is the bridge. I want you to sing back to me when I am singing to you. So here we go. We are a bridge. We are a bridge to a world.
everyone. When we commit, we're all gonna fit in a world that works for everyone. In a world. Wow. Thank you so much, Kit Holmes, for being here with us today. And thank all of you for being with us today. We're coming to the end of our service, and I'd just like to uh, tell you that next week our musical inspiration will be Gary Lynn Floyd. Yes. He hasn't been here for a while, but he'll be with us next week. Uh, we have on-call practitioners. Their numbers are available in the comments section and on the website. Join me on Tuesday evening for our Community Care Connect uh, time at 6.30 this past week, we had a great beginning conversation of talking just about the things that are going on and how we're, how we're dealing with those. And we're gonna be continuing those conversations on our Tuesday evenings. And I invite you to continue to use the treatment for supply. It really is needed. This is not the time to slack off. This is a time to keep going, keep going, keep going with that treatment and reading it because we do need divine right action right now and all those things that the treatment call for and speak the word for. So continue most of all to connect with each other. Sending love notes, text messages, thoughts, prayers, connect, connect, connect. That's what we do, we connect. And now to close us out, we have a few CLF friends who are going to connect with you right now. Good morning, CLF. Hi, CLF. This is Bobby Crotty, and I'm wishing you all a wonderful day. Can't wait till we can be together again. Take care. Love you. Hello there, Creative Living Fellowship. It's David. I hope you're all doing well and staying safe, and I can't wait to see all of you again real soon. Good morning, CLF family. Practitioner and animal chaplain Fran here. Saying love you, miss you all. Can't wait to see you. Be safe, stay healthy. Love you all. Hello, Creative Building Fellowship. It's Reverend Christopher here. See you soon. Hi, CLF. Miss you, love you. Good morning, CLF. Knowing for everyone in the congregation, inner peace and perfect health. See you soon.